right, so we're here at the Bluebird Mountain with uh, Konstantin. How do you do? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> nice. And you have got the Powder Bee in your hands. What kind of device is this? Well, Powder Bee is an avalanche safety drone. So the idea is that the skier or snowboarder who is in uh, the backcountry has the drone in his backpack and in case of an avalanche accident you can pull it out and it automatically searches for the avalanche beacon. Okay, and uh, so you don't control it with any uh, device or anything, or how do, you, how do you fly it? Well, for legal reasons, we need an app just to have you, you have to control in the end, but it does everything automatically. So you pull it out of the backpack, and you extend the antenna, point it in the direction of the avalanche cone, and you press the button, and that's it. From there on, it takes over, takes off, and flies the avalanche search pattern. And uh, when it gets a signal from uh, the beacon that it looks for, what, what does the drone do then? Uh, the drone lands within five meters of the victim and then you can do the find search like you normally would. Um, and you can see it and you can hear it very fast. So even in fog or if it's windy or everything, it uh, points to the right direction. How stable is it if it's uh, windy and so on? How, how, how often can it fly? So we have wind stability up to 60 kilometers per hour by now. And wow. <laughs> So it, it's slow then if it had the, the wind right in the face, but uh, if it's wind from the back, it's actually good because then it's way faster. Um, so we have wind stability up to then and we tested in the Alps with, um, how do you call that in English? Like when you have a gust of wind at uh, up to 100 kilometers per hour and it doesn't fall out of the sky, it still has its stable position and finds back on the way. Sounds really good. And uh, what about if there's any obstacle in the sky? Does it uh, avoid that or uh, how do you manage there? And we have no obstacle avoidance so far, so we have uh, underneath there's the sensor who holds the ground distance so it doesn't fly into snow debris on the avalanche field because we have uh, right about like 1 meter 20 or something above the avalanche surface and there it can fly up and down and around but if there's trees or something, uh, well I have to be honest, though, uh, no chance yet. So the, so the powder bee will work uh, in the high alpine when it's, when it's free, so to speak, above the snow? Yeah, exactly. It's made for high alpine conditions where there are no trees or uh, no face cliffs or something which could be in the way. So it's all for uh, iterations in the future because there's uh, innovative potential for 10 years to come. But for now, what we can do now and what we can promise now is that. How do you come up with it and how has the process been uh, so far? Well, we actually are from Hamburg in Germany where there are no mountains at all and the sea is close by. So. Uh, we figured that we have no idea what to do in case of an avalanche accident and we went to one of these avalanche trainings and uh, did the manual search for the first time um, and it was quite tedious and it was really exhausting and we wished for somebody to come up with it to make it easier and nobody did for several years so then we took the matter in our own hands. And uh, how long have you been working on this uh, prototype now? We've been on it for three years now and it's still like one or two years to market depending on if we find an investor who wants to go with us. Um, yeah, so it's a prototype, but working prototype now. Cool. Um, let me see. Uh, what should I ask more? What's more interesting about this one? What have we uh, not talked about? Uh, Are there any other? How, how much does it does it weigh? Uh, it's it weighs in with uh, less than 500 grams now. Of course, there will be a hard case for it, so a little bit heavier than that. Um, but still good enough, I would say, like, having one additional person in the search process with you and it knows the pattern and it's way faster than you, um, I would say 500 grams is good enough. Yeah. And, and uh, what kind of battery is uh, driving it right now? We have a lithium polymer uh, battery in there and have getting a fly time depending on the height, because the higher you are on the mountain, the harder it gets for the drone to fly. So we get, uh, after a long skiing day at minus 10 degrees, we get still eight minutes flying time out of it at 3,000 meters, and if you're at 2,000, it's 12 minutes, 14 minutes. And, um, well, it's actually quite cold resistant because the moment you start the drone, it needs so much power that the uh, battery gets really hot already. So uh, we've been really good test results from uh, wind, what I said, snow, cold, everything's fine. And I guess that, like the flight time won't be very long for this device in most cases. No, absolutely not, because I mean in an avalanche accident uh, you need every second, so you have to be fast and Powder B flies uh, a 100 or 120 meter field now in less than five minutes, so we're good with the battery time, I'd say. How about the antenna? At uh, How deep can you be buried and uh, the drone will still uh, find the beacon? 
So we tested up to two meters because uh, the normal probes we're with you are only two meters and of course you still need to dig. So two meters are our benchmark. Um, that's again what we can promise because if, if you get lucky and in the right way, of course, person could be deeper theoretically, but two meters is a safe thing to say. Yeah. Did you hear about there was one person in uh, Switzerland now who was buried three meters down, but they found them with a RECO system. Yeah, sure enough. I mean, the, when the professional rescue is there, they also have longer probes, up to five meters or something. And you have you have crazy freak accidents. I just read about last year there were people buried 12 meters, and I don't know where snow that deep comes from. Yeah, but uh, of course there there are situations where you can't help the people anymore. But two meters, I mean, then you uh, can fix most situation, I guess. So, is there anything more that you want to mention uh, about uh, this innovation from you? Well, we're currently looking for investors, so if there is somebody out there who enjoys skiing and snowboarding as much as we do and uh, has some money to spare, we're happy. <laughs> How much money? Uh, depending on what we want to go with in the market. So when we're talking about uh, 500 and a slow start into the market, then it would be, uh, well, we plan around 900,000 euros, so something like that. So if somebody has uh, 900,000 euros that they want to invest, they should contact you, Konstantin. Yeah, absolutely. Find us at uh, bluebirdmountain.de and get the contact from there, yes. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And uh, if you don't have that kind of money, then continue looking at our videos here from ISPO. And don't forget to subscribe. And uh, thanks a lot, Konstantin. You're very welcome. Thank you.